Yes, John has all the latest news on everything that is happening in the literal wild, wild west of the UFO world. And John, we really do appreciate you coming back in. Thank you, buddy. Happy to be here. Thank you, everyone, for sticking around. We do appreciate it. Absolutely. Your fedora is looking fantastic, as per usual. Thank you, sir. All right. We're going to kick things off. Robert Salas apparently got some money. Tell us who he Robert Salas is. Yeah, so Robert Salas is a is a retired um, a retired Air Force, and uh, and he's the person who um, was uh, you know I, I don't remember exactly um, you know uh, if if he should be credited as the as the key person that was involved or if one of the key people, but he's basically he's he's very much responsible for bringing all of us all these wonderful stories or scary stories depending on how you look at it of nuclear operators um, being in silos that were shut down. Uh, throughout the you know the last um, you know 10 20 30 40 years in the US military so um, so he's he's basically kind of a um, a pied piper to the to the whistleblowers in a way yeah and, uh, didn't he work on one of those missile silos in North Dakota when this happened and, absolutely and, and I believe it happened right around the same time when Grant Cameron had his Charlie Red star sighting um I, that was close to the the north dakota border in manitoba could be i i, th I thought robert salas's experience was in 67 i didn't think Maybe. grants was that Maybe. early but but no, uh in the 70s yeah okay but yeah no but I mean, it's definitely around the same time frame and and the the thing is is that to be honest with you i I haven't studied this topic enough. This is, you know, this is another one of those rabbit holes that that you eventually have to jump into. That you know is is a pretty deep dive, and um, and so I don't know. My, my assumption has always been that there are pockets of activity that have happened over time. That it's not, it hasn't been this consistent thing the whole time. But to be honest with you, I I, I don't know. I I just know that that to me. This is one of the most baffling aspects of this entire phenomenon because you know everything else you can argue about it. This is a national security issue, right? Of all things, this is something that, that people actually justifiably should be just a wee bit concerned about. And everyone's like, it's crazy. I don't get it. I agree. So what's he got some cash for? So basically, um, as we talked about a couple of weeks ago, um, he was crowdfunding for a another um, another press event um, like the one that was done a while ago, where he basically uh, brings in he he invites as many um, uh, former and sitting congressmen, uh, congress people, and and senators as he can, and he gets uh, as many um, you know um, very honorable uh, service people as he can. Um, you know, usually retired, but but occasionally not to come in and tell their stories. And it's usually incredibly powerful testimony. Um, some of it's actually a little hard to listen to at times because it's very confusing. And um, but uh, essentially, you know, instead of, you know, basically bringing that old tape, um, you know, of, of those proceedings, you know, into the future and expecting people to to be impacted by it. He wants to hold an entirely new event. Uh, that will hopefully really make an impression and really stick up in people's minds because in many ways, this should be one of the more important stories that everyone's talking about and nobody's talking about it. Very interesting. Do we know when the event is going to happen? It'll be October 19th. So that quick? Yeah, it, it, the, it'll be October 19th. It's, 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 it's only in, uh, in four days. So it's, it's, it's very shortly. All right. Well, we will have to uh, mind uh, or pay attention to what's going on there because that is going to be very, very important and good for him. Now, who is David Falch and why is he important to what's going on right now? OK, so so this this is a really important this. This is a, I wish more people were talking about this. This is a really important lesson for all of us. So first off, uh, Dave Falch. So he, very, very nice gentleman. He is a uh, a military flare uh, camera technician repair person. Okay, so basically, when those pods, you know, need to be fixed, he is the guy that takes them apart. Or I, I don't know if he still does it. I believe he still does, but he's the one that essentially repairs 
FLIR equipment. So he's incredibly knowledgeable about, about this FLIR gear. And so essentially he's been one of the key people for the last several months that has been debating back and forth with people like Mick West, trying to show how these videos that have been coming out um, don't necessarily mean what someone like Mick says they mean. And um, just uh, just like a week ago, which I, I sadly I believe is the video that that, that triggered the issue. Um, I, I talked about a video that he'd put out that I linked and and I hope you all watched it because it's gone now and you're never going to see it again. Um, this beautiful video he put out where he basically not only explained why the, the duck video was something important, but he showed what a mylar balloon looks like under IR, what a normal balloon looks like under IR. What this He showed a bunch of examples of what different things look like in IR, and it was an incredibly valuable, for me anyway, it was a very valuable lesson, and I really enjoyed it. It was a fantastic video. I'm really sorry I didn't save it, because um, evidently, and needless to say, he, he, has, he, he must maintain some, I, I don't know what level, but he has to maintain some sort of a clearance for the job he has. And um, somebody reached out to him and notified him that um, he needed to reformat his social media presence. And so without any warning whatsoever, he deleted every video he's ever made um, on the equipment. He um, completely just wiped out everything. And he's still on Twitter. He still has a has a YouTube page. He's still going to be putting out videos about the other things he used to put videos about. But basically, every single thing that he's done to help us is gone. And there was a huge debate scheduled between him and um, uh, Mick West and, and some other people that was scheduled for just a couple of days from now. And he won't be attending that. It sounds like somebody at his job got to him. Well, basically, this last video that he did, the reason why I loved it so much is because it gave a lot of information. It was a great video, right? I mean, it, it, it was beautiful. It, it showed you, it, you know, he said, okay, this is what this is. Boom. This is what this is. Boom. I mean, I learned more about the way those cameras work in that video than I had in any of his other videos. It was, it was like, it was like something you'd get out of, out of product training from the company. And um, my guess is, is that, you know, he was already, he'd already been kind of playing on a line this whole time, you know? Um, and, uh, and uh, my guess, and I, I, this is just my guess is that this last video, even though it was very tame, it was very polite and it was very mellow and it wasn't about, it wasn't about weapons. I think it was just so informative that, uh, you know, he was basically told, okay, you know, now you've, you've gotten to a point where, you know, um, foreign powers can be using this to defeat our technology. And so, um, uh, and, and, you know, and in some cases what happens is they get evidence that someone is actually slurping down that information that happened to another person in the community that I, I won't name is that they found out that people were actually watching his content for the purpose of intelligence gathering. And so the instant they find out that's going on, they're, they're going to, they're going to tap you on the shoulder and say, okay, you know, it's time to step back a bit. But the reason why well, the reason that's important is because it means that, you know, all these, there's a lot of people in this community that currently have, jobs that require some level of clearance and they're always walking a line to help us out and we must appreciate them and if you like their content save a local copy <laughs> because yeah, you no never kidding. know when they might disappear a lot of these people are here for a good time not a long time but you know that's not the first time i have heard of something like this happening on both fronts number one i was told by somebody very high up and close to uh, luis elizondo who stated that UFO Twitter, literally everybody in the UFO game in Washington, D.C., and all the alphabet J agencies have Twitter accounts just so they can follow UFO Twitter, oh, just sure. what everybody oh, sure. is talking about. I mean, it is filled with spooks now. And, and the thing is, that a lot of those people, it, it isn't for nefarious reasons in all cases. It's If, if they're actually working on this topic, it's a good place to gather information that, that they're going to learn from. But at the same time, if they see someone they know has a clearance, talk about something they shouldn't, they're going to flag it. Absolutely. Michael Schratt, the aviation historian, who's a good friend of this show, great guy, probably the best aviation researcher in North America, or at least one of the best. Uh, he was actually shut down for a while from doing interviews by his company as well, because he works for an aviation company 
and they felt he was uh, they didn't want one of their employees being yep. popular for being in this UFO subject and he had to pull the plug for a while and you know it, it's tough it's hard you know but when you work for a company whose main client is the United States military they pay attention they really Ooh, do oh yes all right yes they do Let's move on to. Oh, and so one, just thank you, Dave Fouch, for all you did. We appreciate it. We understand what you did. It's all good. You're still welcome in this community. We appreciate what you did. No harm, no foul. All right. First, we had Tom DeLong. Then we had Robbie Williams, but he didn't really make a UFO sting. Now we have Demi Lovato. But guess what, people? There's another pop star coming to the UFO world in 2022 on Discovery Plus. So if you're a fan of Kesha, she is someone who is going to be having a brand new UFO show on television on Discovery Plus. John, I mean, this just came down yesterday. I saw the post today. I guess here we go with the celebrities getting into the UFO game. Yes, but th this one, this one has the op this one has a small possibility of being a little bit different, because see, um, uh, a, a lot of you might know uh, 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 Steve Greenstreet and, and uh, or Stephen Greenstreet, and uh, you know the guy who does the basement office and and uh, and so forth, and and you know he he's a good member of the community. Well, it turns out that um, he was on a, a show with UFO Jane the other day, who 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 you've had on your show, Dave. And uh, and it turns out that, the, that they started talking about about Keisha and um, and it turns out that um, uh, he, he Stephen's very good friends with her brother. And when she first started getting popular, they decided that they were going to document her rise to power, her rise to fame. And so for two years, Stephen Greenstreet and his buddy followed her around the world with a camera crew and documented her. And so Stephen Greenstreet was like like the cinematography guy, right? Well, they were traveling through Ohio and they got to talking about UFOs and it turns out that Keisha was a big UFO fan and it dawned on her that they were right by Wright Patterson. So she stops the bus and says, I don't care if we're going to be late, we're going. So they immediately called the local MUFON rep to get them to meet them out there. They called the rep for the Air Force to arrange a, a tour. So the whole tour bus gets there you know, they all get out, you know, Stephen Greenstreet's following, and he told this whole story on UFO Jane's channel, and he's following around the camera, and finally, at some point during the day, she got frustrated, and she's like, you know, you guys aren't showing me anything, I want to, you know, where are, the, where are the aliens, I want to see the bodies, right, and there was these hangers over to the right that were in restricted area, she took off running, she just exit stage right and started booking it toward, like, took off away from everyone, like, you runs across into this restricted area, right? Runs up to the hangar doors of this of this air and starts banging on the doors. Show me those aliens. I know you have those aliens, right? And so Steven's like chasing her with a camera, like you know, thinking, oh great, you know, we're all gonna get shot, you know. And uh and uh, and he tells the story better than I did. Please watch watch UFO Jane show. And uh and some short time later, some uh, nice people in, in black vehicles with black outfits showed up with firearms and um, and Keisha very wisely noticed and said, well, you know, it's probably a good time for us to exit, you know, and they, they left peacefully, but um, that girl's got some fire in her. And um, I think this might be a different kind of UFO show. We'll have to see, but I, I have to say, based on the story I just heard, I'm a little bit curious. I, I'm a little curious too. I mean, you know what? Let, let's try it out. Let's try it out. It'll you be know, interesting. I, I mean, look, as this gets more popular, we may not agree with a lot of the famous people who are delving into this interest, and all of a sudden, because of their pull, uh, television makes them insta UFO researchers right. with credibility. And I don't think that's good for our field. But I will say this when people like Demi Lovato and now Kesha are out there really promoting the UFO game to their millions of followers on social media, that is good for the UFO field. We not, may not agree with the message. We may not agree with the person. We may not agree that when Demi comes out and says, aliens shouldn't be called aliens because that makes them feel bad. Okay. 
it doesn't matter the reaction. Yes, some of it is cringeworthy, but we still have to remember out of those social media followers, these famous influencers, and that's exactly what they are, have a lot of pull with their people. I look at my son. My son is eight years old, John. And when he goes on YouTube, he asks me point blank when we were driving to his guitar lesson the other night. He's like, Dad, is Metallica the biggest, heavy, best heavy metal band in the world? I said, Well, they're one of the best, you know? And he goes, How many YouTube followers do they have? And I said, Well, son, I really don't know. And he said, well, what about Guns N' Roses? How many YouTube followers do they have? Because my son's all about That's YouTube. That's the only measure, right? So That's the only measure, right? <laughs> but this is the way the younger yep. generation is thinking. Absolutely. They're not thinking about, you know, it's another, you know, B-rated, C-rated. I mean, Kesha hasn't done anything in the music scene in a long time, so it doesn't surprise me, looking at the bigger picture, that this is a good way to get her name back out there. But, you know, the younger crowd, they don't care. It's all about yeah. the influence of social media. And actually, media. I think she just came out with a new album. I, I haven't checked this myself, but that's what UFO Jane said. So I, I think she did just come out with some new material. But you're right. You know, depending on where you are in your career, this might be a good deviation for people. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Final topic tonight, because we are running a little bit late before we got to get to Shirky Poo's news. Uh, we got about a minute here, bud. 11 databases combined to form what? One database to rule them all. So this is coming out of that new book, Skinwalkers at the Pentagon. Um, I can't go into a lot of detail right now. I'll include it in my notes. Uh, but basically from this book and uh, and our friend uh, of the show, um, uh, Thomas Fessler, basically covered this in his show today. Um, so I, I include a screenshot of his show to show the database list. But what, what, we, what you get from the book is the list of all the databases, the 10 databases that went in. There's one more database missing, which is the um, the uh, account at Skinwalker Ranch of, of personal impact and personal injury and personal medical impact. That was not listed, but we know that's one of the 11 databases. And basically one of the outputs of OSAP was this massive database that had 11 shoved into it. And this database is still active, still online and being used by the U.S. military. Wow. John, stick around for the after show that we'll do on our YouTube channel. And let's get to Shirky Poo's news. <laughs> 